hi guys, thanks for joining. This is Alberto speaking from RevAngine. I'm also with my colleague Maggie from uh, Merce Consult. Hello, Maggie. Hey, hello everyone. Excellent. So thanks very much for your time. So the reason why we're here today is because we wanted to cover a topic that we think is very important for emerging sales executives in technology companies, which is hiring the right talent. So the reason why, why this is important is because, you know, nobody wants to uh, spend a fortune hiring and, and, and having a salespeople on role simply to find out a few months down the line that they're not the right person and they have to leave the company without, you know, delivering any results. That right, Maggie? Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine the effort, the resources, the money that goes into hiring, you know, and there's a good level of emotional involvement as well. So I think when it comes to hiring the right sales talent, you know, the better you can get at it, you know, the, the better it is for the organization, both in the short term as well as long term. Absolutely. And I don't know, guys, I mean, you CEOs of, of uh, emerging technology companies, did you know that it takes about six months for the average salespeople to uh, start selling and that the cost of hiring so those people is about 150% of their basic salary, which I believe in around London is about 45 to 50K. So you do the math, it's very important to, to, you know, to crack this and to get the right people on board. And so Mari, uh, Maggie and I have been working together uh, for quite a while now, and we uh, worked in a particular organization that was really, really good at hiring relatively junior salespeople and turning them into revenue machi machines uh, and and the four key criteria uh, Maggie do you remember the, that criteria what that criteria was was basically oh, dry. I do. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so do you want me to list them out so, yeah, we, sure. so your audience knows what we're going to talk about so the four criteria or traits that we we believe are really um, important when it comes to hiring is drive, sales acumen, intellect, um, executive presence. And I did say to um, Alberto, as we started discussing this, I was going to add sense of purpose because that is also a key attribute for our top sales, um, sales people to have, to be able to move things forward in confidence. Absolutely. And that just ties in very nicely with drive. So what is drive? So drive is the most important characteristic of a salesperson, I would say. And it's basically what keeps you going in the darkest times of daily rejection. You know, it makes you basically stand up and wake up after a daily fall. And and this particular company we used to work for were really good because what they would do was to try and understand what made you tick as an individual. What was your particular objective? What you wanted to achieve in life? And then they would try to understand if you had a strategy to achieve that objective. And what they would do is to try and connect the daily number of calls, meetings, and everything that you were doing at your job on a daily basis with achieving that particular objective of yours. And remember that, Maggie? I do, I do. And, and, you know, thinking back now, I'm like, wow. Because, you know, if, if you can't really identify what motivates or what drives someone, then, you know, work done could easily be reversing back to zero, you know, because the drive is what pushes someone to actually get up, you know, especially on the dark days and go, I still want to do this because, whatever the challenges I'm facing, you know, it's nothing compared to this big thing that I'm looking to achieve. And, and for instance, you know, um, an example of someone, someone who wants to buy this big mansion, or, or it could be their first house. And, you know, at that particular moment, that is the drive for them. And, and so connecting, you know, the role or the activities in the job that you're hiring them for, or, or enabling them to be able to connect to that during the sales pro the, the interviewing process is really important because then it comes alive for them. They can say, well, if, if this is the case, you know, then, you know, me being able to, you know, do X number of activities to close X number of deals, 
and to get you know this amount of commission equals me being able to save for this deposit or to furnish the house or to you know to do the construction <laughs> of my new kitchen that kind of thing so so I think it's really important and it's not only material things you know for some people it's something different you know if they wanted to be able to go and donate you know x number of money to a charity that they strongly care about they should be able to connect this drive behind their actions with their role so then it brings more meaning to what they do absolutely i remember back in the day my dream was to build a hotel and to be able to manage that hotel with with my family so every day every every call i made every meeting i had no matter how many rejections i would picture that hotel and that would go. keep me going absolutely. so tip for you ensure that you know, you understand what drives your candidates and make a clear connection with, you know, between them achieving their dreams and achieving your quota. Then all you need to do is make sure that you have the right tools and the right me metrics in place mm -hmm. to, to measure the performance, to identify areas where they need improvement and, and help, you know, give them the right support. You'd be amazed at the results. Absolutely. Great. So that the second, that's the first uh, item drive. The second would be uh, sales acumen, and and I think this is this is also an important factor. You know, every, mm -hmm. I have seen companies hire senior salespeople with twenty odd years of experience who manage to actually sell almost nothing after a long time working for that company. Uh, and in fact, not only didn't they sell too much, but also they managed to distract all the people in sales organizations who wanted to help them close a transatlantic pipeline with a hundred zeros that actually yes. never closed. Yes. So uh, it, it's, it's an important, uh, it, it's, a com it, it's a convention to think, especially for small vendors, we need a heavy heater who come in and miraculously help us sell this yes. into their contact <laughs> network. And, and sometimes it's, it actually, it's not what you need. Do you, would you agree with that, Maggie? I, I would, I would totally agree. And also I will say, you know, the way we used to sell is changing quite dramatically. And so, you know, gone are the days when you see a salesman, you know, just walk into the room and then they'll pick up this gadget and go, this is magic and that is magic. And, you know, it's going to solve the problem. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily work that way. And to be honest, you know, I have spoken to a lot of, um, you know, sales um, executives who are kind of struggling with the new way of selling. Um, because the new way of selling, it's taking a different tune altogether. And so sales acumen in itself is evolving. So, so yes, there is a commission that comes after a sale has been done. Um, and a lot of salespeople, traditional salespeople are motivated by that. But things have moved on a bit. And so now sales acumen is also to do with how they're connecting with people. You know, how they're identifying what someone really needs in order to actually connect with them and to actually identify how they can solve that problem for them and then link it back to the solution that they have to sell. So, so sales acumen works on all so many different levels now and so it's important that the salesperson of the new world doesn't necessarily think that it's just about going in and doing a sale but it's also about the nuances around the cell and how to adapt to make this work for them. So yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And not only, you know, have, we have seen companies fail, you know, companies who have hired a sales, super sales guru mm -hmm. fail because they didn't have the characteristics they needed or they assumed wrongly that they didn't need any training. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also seen, uh, people walked out of organizations, salespeople leaving the organization after a few weeks yeah. as the relationships with management started to deteriorate because they yeah. couldn't see the sales they were hoping, they were hoping yeah. for. Yeah. And this is sometimes a challenge in itself because mm -hmm. if you don't have other metrics to measure the progression day by day, then all of a sudden you'll come to realize that three, four, five months have passed, your salespeople are not selling, 
what do we do now? Do we sack them? Do we get more people and, 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 and expect the same to happen again? So in these cases, I think what, what probably makes sense, Maggie, and I don't know if you agree, is to have a set of KPIs in place to measure that daily performance and make sure that those guys are doing the things that they're supposed to do, the right number of calls, Absolutely. the right number of meetings, to again, make sure that things are on track and avoid uh, you know, surprises later down the line. Oh, yes. What do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And having this KPI in, in place and also linking that KPI, in, you know, from kind of the, the immediate timelines when we're ex expecting these results to happen and also, you know, being able to paint the picture of the longer term is really important. Now, you see that a lot of companies are now introducing prospect journey maps or client journey maps because that helps them understand the immediate gratifications that they're going to look at in terms of low hanging fruit and how they're going to close them, the activities that they need to do to close some of the low hanging fruits, um, but also the longer term strategies in terms of upselling, cross selling opportunities. But you need someone with that sales acumen to understand the correlation between your KPIs, the activities. I mean, you can't hire a salesperson who can't do the activity so the activity <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> um, directly links to that the importance of building strong relationships links to that but they should be able to be the type of person who has that level of self acumen to understand that yes they have to in the short term close the deals if they follow the structured enablement processes in place but also look at the longer term in terms of what is also going to be a bigger reward for them Absolutely. Sometimes it's just better to hire relatively junior salespeople oh, with yes. some sales experience yes. and make sure that you provide them with the right onboarding sales methodologies, process and tools they need to be successful. And, and, and also know your numbers, you know, know how many calls you make a day, how many meetings you need to set up to be able to close a deal within a certain time frame, so that you know that that's the kind of activity that they should be having. Uh, again, don't go crazy on gurus, have a look at what your competitors yeah. are doing, have your numbers, make sure you have the right materials in place and just help them out, you'll be surprised. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. I think the, set, the third one is uh, intellect. I mean, obviously nobody wants a dumb salesperson and that's not what we're applying here, right? So th the point that we're trying to make is that, uh, you know, the salesperson must be able to read the room, to understand who's present, uh, understand their wants and needs, you know, be aware of yes. the context and the people within that context and what's happening around them. Mm. Good salespeople have to relate to buyers and vice versa. You know, people buy, buy from the people they, uh, you know, they, who's selling yes. to them, not, not, not the technology. So uh, yes. some, sometimes th this is very, very useful to, to bear in mind. Don't you think, Maggie? Absolutely. I mean, intellect is really, really important. And, you know, when it comes to that, you're also looking at, you know, the clock speed of that person. So how they're able to adapt because even within the space of, a meeting itself, a lot can change. So, so how sure. how are they switched on? You know, to, to move away from the scripts that they had already prepared for this meeting purely because the dynamics of the meeting has changed. Absolutely. And how how apt are they to be able to switch on and change their maybe quarterly sales strategy because things have changed in the marketplace, or ch things have changed in their prospects organisation. I'll give you an example. Um, I remember um, one particular year I was given X territory and my plan was to kind of look at how I can go and find more prospects or build new business. Um, and I started that, that quarter really positive that this was going to happen. And then suddenly I realized kind of halfway through that it wasn't going to happen because obviously this was a new territory to me and how I had planned in terms of getting new prospects into the territory wasn't working that way in terms of closed deals. I realized that those deals were going to take longer to come in, but I needed the immediate deals to close. So what I, what I had done was change tact immediately and go with another approach, which was kind of more of a retention strategy, but retention with a lot of upsell opportunities. And so then I changed my plan 
in terms of the X number of new business that was coming into that territory. Um, that was still going to be there, but then my immediate plan to actually balance the shortfall that was coming into my territory in terms of non-renewals and other things was to make sure that I was going to then get double or triple buying centers within each of those accounts. Um, and mm. that was something that worked really well because these were relationships that existed already. And so it was easier for me to deepen those relationships and get them to buy extra you know, services for other people within the organizations or to upgrade the existing services within the organization. So, and so, and that year, you know, I did very well and was able to kind of match or upsell to the extent of um, overachieving my target for that quarter. But you need that level of intellect to say, I need to switch, I need to come back. And, you know, so you should be responsive to a lot of things that happen in your sales environment, whether this is internally within your organization, internally, externally within your client's organization, or extending within the marketplace, or things that happened in the in the environment to switch the buying, you know, habits of your salespeople, your your buyers, or your customers. So that level of intellect is really important. And again, during your screening process for a real ideal sales candidate, you should be able to kind of see how they will react to those instances. You know, things like you know asking them to tell stories, or you telling a story and see how they relate to it are very good ways of you know telling how switched on they can be in a sales um, environment to be able to be successful. Absolutely. Role plays are just fantastic for spotting oh, yes. uh, you know, intellect in sales candidates. I remember one particular instance where uh, they, you know, we were in this scenario role play where I had to sell to one of the managing salespeople and the guy, all of a sudden he woke up and left the room and said, okay, so I'll see you later. And I thought, well, well, well what's this? Oh, you have an urgent trip to China. I need to leave. Yeah, exactly. But wait a minute, am I hired? I asked, am I hired or not? What's the next step? So obviously what they wanted to see, if I would have the courage to ask them, hey, am I hired or not? And what about the next step? So those things are coming really, really handy. Uh, the fourth and last topic would be executive presence. So the, 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 look, the, the idea here is, are you trying to get a bunch of guys in their early 20s wearing hoodies to convince a 50 odd year old CIO to change their strategy and point of view? think again. Uh, no challenger methodology, no training is going to help with this. I mean, ultimately, the sales professional should look, uh, think, talk, and walk like the people they're trying to sell to uh, mm -hmm. because they have to relate to them, don't they? Yeah. yeah, they do. They do. And, you know, obviously, you know, if age is not on the side of your, your sales executive, it simply isn't you know <laughs> um, <laughs> but there are things that you can do to um to kind of balance the skills in terms of executive presence and you know very simple techniques like helping them mirror their buyer is absolutely having absolutely. the type of lingo the type of um presence that resonates with their buyer is important, you know, preparing them in such a way that they are actually able to articulate the issues and the problems that the buyer face, um, you know, with a bit of themselves in it, you know. So, so yes, say they were selling to a CEO who is of an older generation and they are of the younger generation, fair enough. But if they are able to talk about the challenges within the CIO's marketplace, and then put a bit of a spin in terms of maybe how this works in their life as a, um, a younger generation person. You know, I think the CIO in this instance would be quite impressed, to, you know, Absolutely. in acknowledging that this guy actually, or this woman actually knows what happens in their world in terms of what's keeping them awake at night and some of the challenges that they're trying to address. But more importantly, maybe what they bring to the table is a fresher way of looking at this and resolving their problems. So there are things that you can play to your advantage, but executive presence is important. How they appear, how they sound, um, how, how they are able to put their messages across 
um, to get the bar in from the buyer or the customer prospect is hugely important. And again, you can screen some of these via the conversations you're having with your salesperson. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about mirroring. It's a great point, Maggie, you made mm -hmm. there. You have to be a mirror for the people who are buying from you. Uh, again, so guys, hiring the sales guy is no easy tool task. So it takes time, it takes effort, and sometimes it might even make sense to hire more than one person at the same time, throw in a little bit of competition and see what works for you. But regardless, if you take a long, hard look at your company, your most successful people, your competitors, and the job descriptions of the competitors on LinkedIn and the kind of jobs that they're posting, you should be able to gather a good understanding of the criteria that that's needed for, for the job, for the task, and it should give you a really good head start and increase your chances of success. So just to recap, in terms of drive, just make sure that you understand what drives your candidate and make a clear connection between them achieving their goal and achieving your quota. Then ensure that you give them the right tools and put in the right metrics in place to measure the performance, identify areas of improvement, and simply provide the training that they need to help them improve. Uh, when it comes to sales acumen, you might not want to go overboard looking for a very expensive sales guru. Sometimes it might make sense to hire relatively junior salespeople with some sales experience and give them the onboarding, the sales methodologies, the sales process and tools that they need to be successful. Also, make sure you know your numbers, how many calls, meetings you need to do per day, a week to be able to close a deal and make sure that you measure those on a weekly and daily basis. When it comes to intellect, simply conducting role plays during the hiring process can help you identify this. And last, executive presence. Ultimately, your sales professionals should look, talk, walk, and behave like the people you want them to sell to. Get them to mirror what the client does. Right, Maggie? Absolutely. Right, so now that we've got everything we need to hire the best in class sales team, why don't we go ahead and give you the extra tip to get there. What we've provided for you in the bottom of this video is a guide and this guide will highlight the four key attributes that we've just described. Um, and more importantly, we're also going to suggest some types of questions that can help you not just say at the first level, but you go a second level deeper and possibly a third level deeper in questioning your candidate. So you will come up with the cream candidate that you need to do the right job. And that is how you're going to build the best in class sales teams. Thank Fantastic. You. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.